Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. The relationship between financial well being and our mental health is a delicate balance that profoundly impacts our lives. Financial struggles can cast shadows of stress and anxiety, while stability can lift our mindset with a sense of security. This connection is not one sided. Just as financial challenges can harm mental health, mental health issues can lead to financial missteps, creating a cycle. Roughly 46% of people with debt have a mental health diagnosis. It's clear we need to do more. The key lies in embracing a holistic approach that nurtures both aspects. Seeking help for mental health is wise, just as consulting a financial advisor is for money management. True financial well-being involves living within your means, setting achievable goals, and understanding that happiness isn't solely tied to wealth. The intertwining of financial well-being and mental health is a crucial aspect of our lives. By tending to both, we create a balance that resonates with our sense of purpose and builds resilience. It's about empowering yourself to navigate challenges while taking care of your well-being beyond monetary measures. Today's guests, Eleni Pronzos and Bryn Swayze, are focused on helping bridge the gap between financial and mental health. They came into the financial industry wanting to make a meaningful, long-term impact in the lives of clients and their loved ones. They are dedicated to educating clients while giving comprehensive, up-to-date financial advice to help you achieve your goals. Elodie and Bryn, thank you so much for coming on my podcast. This is my first time that I have had a conversation of this nature on the podcast, uh, which the guests will find out in a second what we're talking about. But I'm, I'm excited to talk about this. And, um, you know, we connected about a week and a half ago and uh, had some really interesting conversations. So, yeah, thank you guys for making the time to have this conversation. Of course. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, we're so excited to be here. I think, you know, just to touch on the conversations that we had over a week ago, Nick, I think that there is a huge issue of this these topics not being discussed and the fact that we can help each other and spread this information and educate people all over the world on how to empower themselves and educate themselves, um, I think is so important. And I'm really excited that we can kind of collaborate and support everyone that we can. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and for those listening, uh, we're going to talk about uh, financial health, I guess you could word it, or you guys can tell me how we, how we word what we're talking about, but um, there's actually a lot of crossover in in mental health as well, which is you know what a lot of what our podcast is about. So you know we'll touch on that as well. So it's yeah, certainly an interesting topic, and like mental health, probably even more so. Like like we were talking about it, it is crazy that we're not educated about this. Like it doesn't make sense. You know these are things that are fundamental parts of living life. We need to you know you, it, we we learn through trial and error why aren't we being educated properly in school and everything else? I think it's so important to have these conversations. Well, absolutely. And being financial planners, we see this every single day. Even people that think they have plans or a product that's an investment or an insurance, they have no idea how it works. They have no idea how this plays a role in whatever else they're doing. Or they think that they can just rely on, you know, their spouse's plan or a group benefits plan. And we can dive into all of these kind of misconceptions and myths that people are told or or believe through their financial planning process process but the biggest impact that we can make by educating people is actually changing lives materially if you can learn to save you can potentially retire the problem nowadays as young people and younger generations is we don't have the same types of pension styles retirement we don't have the same government support so we can walk away from our employment days at some point whatever that looks like for us right whether you're employed or self-employed you really have to do your own due diligence and create your own retirement funds to be able to have some sort of financial freedom down the road and that those concepts are always talked about now in social media and stuff so i think it's becoming a bit more prevalent like oh there's a gap in this but (laughs) there's a lot of misinformation too and we can dive into that as well so we kind of want to go over some Mm. basic numbers that people should be knowing that they can implement in their plans right away 
readjust and talk to their financial planners about how they can make room for improvement. Yeah, that's super interesting. So it's, I guess people just don't understand a lot of the time that you have to take that step and empower yourself to create that. And we probably a lot of the time think that, you know, if we just follow the norm, things will be okay, but it's really about empowering yourself and having to like, like so many things, I guess it's like, um, starting a business before you do it, you don't understand what actually goes into it, how much work, how much responsibility, how much accountability you're going to have. And Mm -hmm. I assume it's probably a similar thing. Yeah. And there's so much information out there right now. You don't even know who to go to. Right. So you really want to make sure that you're going to somebody who is qualified, like a financial planner. Right. You want to make sure that they they have the resources and the ability to help you and understand, you know, your specific situation. Right. If you're young and you're just trying to, like, you know, leave the nest, how do you do that? Right. How do you make a budget? How do you understand your cash flow coming in and coming out? And especially with people who are living, you know, with partners or your you know, taking that next step in your relationship, financial stress is such, it's so detrimental, right? To your mental health, to your relationship. So one thing that Eleni and I really try to kind of reiterate with all of our clients is making sure that you're having these open conversations, right? Like it shouldn't just be one person manages the finances, the other person just, you know, manages different things. It really, you really need to be on the same page with it right? You know, talk to your parents about how they did things, talk to your friends, talk to your family. It needs to be um, kind of more openly discussed. And that's how you find some good advisors as well, right? Who are in your corner and make sure that they're giving you the right advice. That's interesting. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. There's, I think at least in Canada, the statistic is 45% of relationship problems are financial. Right. And that could be money stress. It could be debt. It could be, for example, in Canada, for every dollar Canadian makes, we're a dollar 70 in debt. And I'd be curious to know some of these other numbers in other countries. But, you know, when you look at that, that stress level, we're not bringing in enough. And so, you know, having your mental health erode over time, um, it makes a huge impact. People get depressed, they lose motivation, and then try to go pay your bills and go to work right? It's a deadly cycle that can just snowball effect, right? If you don't get ahead of it, have these conversations and have a plan, right? That's Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, our main message today is make sure you have a financial plan. And that Mm -hmm. is with a financial planner, right? There's advisors, there's agents, there's all kinds of different people that are in the financial space. And so even even that is really important to find the right person who is qualified to give you holistic wealth grounded advice. Um, But one statistic that I just read the other day is about uh, financial stress and people probably spend about 15 hours per week stressing about that. That is time you're not spending with family. That is time you're not resting. That is time you're not doing the things you want to do, the things you enjoy. And stress equals health issues, right? We know how much stress is related to things like cancer, to things like mental illness, right? So you kind of got to get to the root of the problem to be able to address some of the underlying um, reasons why we have these stresses. So it's really, really, really important to us to kind of help people find that solution. Absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a huge thing. And and that sounds overwhelming to me, what you guys are touching on there with it, well, I mean, and, and the, what, you know, one of the, yeah. And what are the many points that you, you've both brought up finding, you know, if I, if I didn't know where to go, I don't know anything about this and I want to find help. Um, how, like, you know, how, how do you find the quality? How do you know where to go? Cause it would be, it sounds incredibly overwhelming going onto Google and just seeing, you know, if you don't know about it, seeing endless options but not knowing which one's the right one how do you how do you do that how do you know where to begin it's a really really good question and a lot of people stop right there because it's overwhelming to even look right and that's a barrier to entry right off the hop what we typically see 
people's first step is to go toward to their banks, right? Because banks have been there forever. They are financial institutions that we know we use every day. And that kind of seems like a given, like, oh, I'll just go to my bank and get that advice, right? And I'm a, a huge advocate for banks. They do support us in a lot of different ways. But what I do know is that at least in Canada, and I believe this is the same with other countries as well, that the banks have a very, very limited scope on what they can offer and provide advice on. They are salaried employees typically. They have maybe a product shelf that is only available for that bank's brand, for example. So if you want to find the right investment, well, that person's only going to tell you, you know, what the options are at that particular institution. Whereas going for an independent financial advisor, they should have access to multiple financial institutions so they can find the right one based off your specific situation, right? On where you can kind of get that advice, right? Mm. So banks are a great starting place. They can manage your cash flow there, all of that. But what I recommend is looking through your network, also LinkedIn and Google um, for a independent financial advisor or planner. Yeah, so it sounds similar to, I guess, in if we compare it to mental health, if you're trying yes. to take that first step, where do I go? Do I go and talk to this coach? Do I see a therapist, a psychologist, a psychiatrist? Uh, you know, which one do I find? Yes. How do I get them? It's So it's a, a similar process, which I guess it comes down to, you know, really the fundamental thing that we um, said at the beginning, education. If we're, we can all be more educated, if we can take it upon ourselves to educate our, ourselves more. I mean, it's crazy even some of the things um, that, like what you said, Bryn, you know, we don't even ask our parents about how they manage their finances. I've never asked my parents about it or for advice, and, <laughs> and they, ne they never told me, but it's not even something that you think, oh, I, why don't I sit down with them and say, hey, can you just show me how you do this stuff? Because maybe that'll help me as well. It's like we ask them other things, so... Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't ask friends. It's really weird. Yeah, it's interesting. I know. It, it is interesting, right? You don't have to ask your parents like, all right, tell me what's in your bank account, right? You don't need to like talk about net worth, but yep. just asking like, okay, hey, how did you guys start off? What were like, what were the conversations that, you know, mom and dad had together, right? It's such a vital thing that you need to discuss in a relationship because of the potential stress that it can lead to. And just like when you're interviewing for different therapists to make sure that there's a good relationship, right? Because when you're working with an advisor or, or a planner, like you should be thinking that you're going to be working with this person for the next 20 or 30 years, right? You don't want to have to be switching over and giving a new person your financial advice every two years. It's just so tiring, right? So you want to make sure that you definitely you vibe with someone, that they understand your position and that they them themselves is going to be there for you in the next 15, 20, 30 years, potentially. Right. Um, and that's, you know, where the planner comes in because they're not looking at just, you know, your finances tomorrow or next year. They're looking about like you when you're 80 and 90 years old. Right. Yeah. Even passing and, assets in the next generation. Yeah. And, and, and two more questions on that. Um, if so, uh, number one, um, how often is it an obstacle where people, you know, they want the help, they want to improve, but then it becomes a stress that, hey, I'm actually doing this because I need to save money and now I'm too scared to actually spend the money on doing this because, and, and then, you know, you become too overwhelmed and don't do it and then the problem continues. Um, and number two, just before I get this, forget this other question, because it is coming to mind as you were saying that, um, so my accountant, my I've, I, we've got family accountants and I've been working with the same one who I know really well for a while. And he'll sometimes give me a bit of advice is having a financial advisor um, a lot different than your accountant. Great question. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so the first one, the fear, right? I I am a strong believer that we fear what we don't understand. Why would you put your money towards something that you don't know? You think, oh, I'm going to put it in the market. I could lose it all. Mm. That's a, a very common misconception that we hear all the time. It's like, oh, I don't take risk. It's like, well, risk is really volatility. And risk is really your capacity to withstand ups and downs and what capacity at that, right? So we really, when you sit down with an advisor, no one's just going to say, give me your money and close your eyes and I'm going to take this, right? And if you do come across that, Maybe reconsider. <laughs> red flag. Red flag. Red flag. Yeah. Red flag. 
right? What a proper advisor is going to do is assess you, your lifestyle, your, your psychology of how you operate, how you make other types of decisions. And then they will customize the investment strategy to align with that. Right. There are a lot of compliance pieces as well that we have and regulatory things that we need to stick to to make sure that you're not in something that's too risky and you're not, you know, not understanding what you're in. Right. And there's even more of a push and the the regulatory bodies are coming down even harder because a lot of advisors maybe didn't in the past. Right. Now there's a more of a push to educate your clients and not just take their money. So that's step one. Having that trust. And that understanding and educating yourself, you'll feel more confident in making that decision. And I think the biggest thing to kind of drive that motivation is actually mapping out what the destination is. What is that goal? Right? If it's like, I just need to save for retirement. Okay. Yes. But how much do you need? What Mm -hmm. kind of lifestyle do you want? What debts are you going to have in retirement? Do you want to live off $100,000 a year? Is it $200,000 a year? Did you factor inflation in there? Like it's, it can, you know, it can get pretty detailed, but once you map those out with a qualified person, you've got a goal and you're, you're just motivated to get towards that goal versus fearing putting money away and not having it to spend it. You're actually preparing for Nick at 65 to eat well. Yeah. What is Nick at 65 going to say about your decisions today? Right? Think about the future self of you. And that's a huge motivator because we can look at, okay, the decisions I made at 18, 20, God, what an idiot I was. So whatever, right? Now we have that ability being a bit older and the ability to self-reflect. We could say, okay, well, what is my future self going to say about what I'm doing today? Right. Yeah. That's a really powerful way to get yourself out of that motivation and uh, having someone as an accountability partner. Right. Like we do like budget boot camps with our clients sometimes mm. if we, we want to get them like really on track with changing their spending habits. Right. We meet with our clients on an annual basis, typically, because as life changes and progresses, you know, you have that person that's going to be checking in, making sure you can adjust your plans so you're not left to the darkness on trying to figure out where you need to go once you have that one meeting, right? Yeah. You want to build a long-term relationship with someone and not a transactional one. So you feel more confident about the plans that you're putting in place. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, super, super informative. I'm learning a huge amount talking to you guys. So I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure our listeners will as well. So I'm yeah. going to jump back into all of this stuff, but before we do, I just want to quickly ask both of you guys, to give a bit of a quick background on yourself or your own story and how you got here. So just, just so our listeners can sort of learn a bit more. So um, maybe I'll ask Bryn, do you want to go first and just, yeah, give a quick background on yourself and, you know, how you came to where you are, what, what you guys are doing? Sure. Yeah, well, actually, before I was in the financial services industry, I was actually working in private education. Because I, you know, my background is I want to, I want to educate people. I thought it was, I wanted to educate children, right? I do have a business degree. I've specialized in accounting as well. I did a business and psychology double major. So it's always kind of been within this realm, right? Education and business and finance. And so when I kind of did a little self-reflection and wanted to progress a little bit more from what I was doing before, Um, I found this role as, you know, financial advisor, working to financial planner. And it's really, really great because it's a blend of my backgrounds, right? The accounting, the finance, and then educating people. I'm just educating my clients now on their financial health, right? So I just, I found this role and I just ran with it. I was like, this is such a perfect fit. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. And and Eleni, do you want to share share your, how, how you got here as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I was actually uh, in school to become a psychologist and I've been really, Mm. really passionate about our mind, our support, how trauma affects the brain, just people and our brains in general. I just I'm super passionate about that. Um, But I'm also very entrepreneurial. And so I was actually selling cars on the side (laughs) and uh, trying to break stereotypes as a female and being an honest salesperson. And and I quickly realized that, unfortunately, the car industry doesn't always have the client's best interest at heart. It's funny because I actually had one of those memories on Facebook come up recently. And it was like, 
when I was 15 years old and I actually said on there, I want to get paid to give advice. Oh. <laughs> and here we are at 30 doing that and loving it and so passionate about it because people are out there not knowing where to go. It's not Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com slash book. Yeah, so going back to my other question, uh, so having an accountant, like, does that count as a financial advisor? Is it a very different thing? Can an accountant give you that advice as well? Or would you recommend you have, you have both? Or how does that work? That's a great Tip question. Yeah. And, you know, typically you can have both, right? Accountants are great because they specialize in tax planning and everything. You know, you're more likely to go to your accountant on an annual basis, right? To do your taxes and have questions like that. We work in conjunction with a lot of accountants, right? Depending on if you're working, if it's a corporate client, higher net worth, estate planning, everything like that. All of the advice that we put through, if it's long term for estate planning, you work in conjunction with an account to make sure your whole team is on board, right? They're, mm. You specialize in different things. Um, so it is great to have to have both or to have access to both. Yeah, I, I recommend everyone have both personally because um, an accountant and financial planners are very different. We have completely different jobs. We can provide advice on similar topics, but we are the ones that implement strategies versus they are the ones that are like managing at the end of the day what's happening they can't sign up you for a life insurance plan for example they can't take your money and put it into you know stock market like they can't do any of that they can give you advice on ways to minimize your taxes ways to balance the budget sheet manage your corporation all those things that are really important for our finances but where we come in is really helping implement those said strategies. So what we like to recommend everyone have is a team of experts where you have your accountant, you have your financial planner, and potentially your lawyer as well. Um, if you are a business owner, you should definitely have all three, especially a lawyer, because there's a lot of contract issues and corporate stuff that you want to account for as well. Um, but everybody needs like documents for like your will, power of attorney, uh, things like that to manage, you know, what happens if you're incapacitated or who is getting your assets that you've accumulated at this point, right? That needs to be on paper and it needs to be legalized. So those are all factors and they all play a role together. We typically work hand in hand with these partners as well, but you should consider having a team of experts to help you navigate and having them all talk as well. Right. We see a lot of people having all three, but no one has communicated with each other and no one's on the same page. <laughs> so it's really important to have that. Super interesting. So I guess moving back to, you know, the mental health side of things, we've touched on it a little bit. Uh, how strong is the correlation between our mental well being and our financial health? Oh, Extremely so strong. Like oh, I yeah. I mean, let's talk about, you know, having all of a sudden no paycheck coming in, right? What is the impact to food on the table, bills being paid, the investments that you're starting to invest in, right? All of that stops when your paycheck stops, right? So imagine having that additional stress because you don't have that income coming in. If anybody's experienced losing a job or even a career change. That is so stressful. And finances is one of the biggest stresses of that because you don't know what that's going to look like right away or you're weighing out different options, you know. Um, because our finances dictate everything, unfortunately, money makes the world go round. So we need to know how to utilize the system and the tools available to us, right? You cannot just go out blindly and spend here and there. And unfortunately, the way the world works, we are more detached from our spending we just tap and swipe and we have accounts online it's painful paying cash right yes. you feel that when you got to take money out of your wallet and give that to someone else you feel that <laughs> in your heart it's painful on your bank account you don't feel that yes right when you tap because i've on amazon you don't feel that <laughs> right so like i think there's a big disconnect from that and then all of a sudden you look at your bank account and oh, 
I swear I had more in there. Oh, I really didn't mean to spend that, right? That is a super, super big issue that we're seeing for millennials and under, right? Because we have everything at our fingertips now, we're detached from the process and therefore having all these additional stresses. So I think there's like, as much as there's a huge stress about this and it's more prevalent all the time, there's also people saying, okay, well, maybe I need to educate myself a little bit more. Maybe I need to look at resources for this because it's causing that stress, right? So there are lots of ways you can kind of get ahead of that stress, having a plan, right? Knowing that there's a strategy in place, whether you stick to it 100% or you waver a little bit. Having that end destination will help you maintain on the stressful days, right? Having someone in your corner will help you when there's bad days, you want to ask questions. You've got that sounding board that you can utilize, right? If you don't have a plan, you have no one in your corner and you're just spending freely without a second thought, guess what? You're going to have a lot more stresses and Nick at 65, for example, is going to be really stressed that there isn't enough money to walk away from working one day yeah right yeah. that we see that with seniors now we see struggling seniors that are barely making it or having mm. you know having to live with family members because they cannot afford and they did not prepare properly uh for the later stage of their life yeah it's sad it's really sad and um it is and is the the economy playing a lot into this like i i presume a lot of people just are struggling to make ends meet and you know literally how do i pay rent how do i even put food on the table so probably when you're in that situation the last thing you're going to think about is uh i need a financial planner you're probably thinking well i that would be a luxury almost because right now i'm just in survival mode i can you know i need a job or my job's not even paying enough money so i'm working three jobs like um what 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 would be the advice to people that are stuck in that situation yeah i think even right now, if you go into the grocery store, I know, you know, for myself here in Canada, you just, if you just stop and listen to people's conversations, everyone's talking about inflation. Everyone's talking about, you know, oh my God, a watermelon cost me $8 now. I remember when it was four, you know, the cost of goods and services is going up. So I think just even on your own, you really need to have a good understanding of the money that comes in to the household on a monthly basis and where your money is going right? We do these spending analysis with our clients often because it is shocking that people just don't know where their money is going, right? Like Eleni was saying before, you're tapping here, you're, you know, automatically putting your credit card information into a bunch of different websites and purchasing things and it adds up, right? Pennies add up. So you just have to really do some self-reflection, do, you know, a breakdown for two or three months, you know, see the money that comes in, the money that goes out and see if there's ways that you can adjust your lifestyle, right? Just even the littlest things, you know, not going for coffee, get making coffee at home, it all adds up, right? And putting away $100 a month is a great starting point, right? As long as you're paying yourself first, even just a little bit, you're working towards that future, right? Even though it may seem like times are very tough right now, um, just making sure that you're living within your means, right? You're not stretching yourself too thin, that you're prioritizing the things that matter, right? Your health, your family, making sure that you're comfortable and living a happy life, right? Yeah, yeah I think the biggest risk is not doing something and mm -hmm. not asking for help, right? Because we are all professionals that are here to help. Our business model and many, 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 many others is that they, we don't charge for the advice. So you can mm. have a free consultation. You can say, look, like I'm just making it paycheck to paycheck. Is there any room for improvement? Right? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But wouldn't you want to know to see what steps you can take? If you don't know, maybe I can consolidate some debt over here so my interest payments are less. Right? Sometimes there's credit cards that have 0% for 12 months. Right? Mm. Balance transfers. There's all kinds of little planning techniques that the average Joe is not going to know about and the financial planner would. So it doesn't, the only risk is to not go and check to see if there's any room for improvement. And then you can kind of take further steps towards that, um, making changes or whatever. Right. But I think honestly, everyone does need to have a, someone analyze their current situation, right? Yeah. That way, you know, is there room for improvement or am I doing everything I possibly could? Because 
that would provide peace of mind too. If a professional says, man, you're doing everything right. Yeah. Just stay, stay the course, right? That would ease some anxiety, I'd like to think, right? Absolutely. Knowing that you're doing the right thing, right? Maybe, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize I could change this and now I've got an extra hundred bucks a month. What we like mm. to help our clients that are really, really tight for money is starting with 25 bucks a week because you can split it up that small. You, that's that's a meal out, right? That is something that we all don't even look at, $25 missing from our account, and it just slowly stacks in an account that ideally you can grow as well, right? Because there's the inflation risk. And the inflation risk is really the money value that our dollars are buying is eroding over time. Yeah. So $1,000 in today's dollars in 20 years, at a 4% inflation rate will be worth $467 in 20 years. You will have the buying power of 467. Wow. So when you're thinking about, okay, well, how do I get ahead of this? You want to have an investment return that ideally is over the inflation rate. So at least you can break even. Right? Yeah. That's a really, really, really big factor. So inflation right now here is about 5%. But overall, we're still looking at a 2, 2.3 rate of inflation. So that's kind of a good ballpark to know. Globally, the rate of inflation is roughly 2 to 3% long term overall. So if you can get past that, it's better than leaving your money in a bank account, right? And so your money will keep up with the cost of living overall, right? And if you're getting about a 6% rate of return, you can assume your money will double every 12 years if it's compounding mm. so that's another good rule of thumb to know right six percent 12 years your money will double that's super interesting yeah no thank you for sharing that um, and how many people do you guys think are living above their means is that pretty common? 90%. <laughs> yeah. it is. I don't it's know hard. for sure. It's hard not to, right? There's yeah. so much stuff that's not? readily yeah. available. Amazon just delivers in a day, right? Yeah. Beautiful gift, but you know there are some consequences that come with it. So, you know, all these, you know, delivery services, all the extra fees and tips and all that kind of stuff, it definitely adds up. So, it's really, it is hard to live within your means, but especially while you're young, if you're able to pay yourself first and you can be diligent and learn that rule, oh my God, you're going to be laughing in retirement, right? It's just, it's such a little thing, but you get that paycheck, put some money towards your savings and then you automatically. Yeah. 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 One one kind of good rule of thumb that we like to start our clients out with who are, don't really know where to start or don't have much to start with is the 90-10 rule. Have you heard of that before? No, no. No. Okay. So this is a great rule of thumb. The 90-10 rule says spend 90%. Spend on what you want, what you need, what you have to, right? The non-negotiables, the fun stuff, right? Take that 10% and pay yourself. That's just, uh, you know, to add what Bryn was saying here. You want to have about 10% of your annual income going automatically into the right saving strategies mm. for you, mm. right? Whether that is all investments, whether it's some emergency cash savings, whether it's some insurance products to protect what you're building, right? There's a lot of different things that you could put pay yourself towards, but you want to have a roughly minimum 10% if you can towards that because you're getting ahead of yourself. You know, you're getting ahead of these issues that we're dealing with. If you think about, okay, now we're in retirement. And even if you don't want to live off 100% of what you're making, but you want to live off 70% of what you're making, that 10% has got to work real hard, right? Yeah. Starting at zero is even worse, right? You really, if you want to live off 70%, which is kind of another rule of thumb that people look at is, you know, you really got to put some while you have the working years a way to get to that goal. So again, start with the goals. Goal yep. setting is really the key here. If you don't know where you're going, how do you know if you need to go left, veer right, U-turn, right? <laughs> you have no yeah. idea. You got to figure out that destination. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing all of this. Uh, I think, you know, mm. our listeners will take so much out of it. I'm learning a lot here. Uh, I'm going to go and find myself a financial advisor after this. So um, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Uh, we, we finish every episode with five closing questions. 
So I might just, maybe I'll get you both, just short answers to these, but I'll, I'll let, let you both answer, answer each one. So uh, the first one is, what is your best childhood memory that comes to mind? So uh, maybe, yeah, Eleni, if you want to go first. Oh my God, that's a loaded one. But I would say my favorite childhood memory is the family camping trips that I went on every year. Me, my cousins, my siblings, we'd all go to this one really, really beautiful tiny place in the Sunshine Coast. And the lake is like bath water and we spend like a week there and it is like the best bonding time and really just so great to get out in nature. Beautiful, love that. And Bryn? <laughs> Yeah, mine's kind of similar, I guess. Um, I grew up sailing with my family and it was the best time for us as well. So we every year we go up to this area called Desolation Sound. You can only access it by, you know, float plane or by boat and it's so beautiful. So out in nature with the family, all the bonding, right? Crabbing, fishing, all that nature stuff. So definitely the highlight of my childhood. Yeah, I lived in Vancouver for two years and British Columbia, I think, is just like ridiculously stunning. I'm, I miss it so oh, much. It's crazy. Gorgeous. You are so lucky. Surf and ski in the same day. Like, yeah. Yeah, where, where else? It's so, <laughs> it's so beautiful. What would you say is your personal definition of happiness? Oh, my gosh. These are getting I deep. I love the right question. Um, I would say my personal definition of happiness would be living a life that is super fulfilling, making an impact in the lives around me, um, enjoying the small moments, taking every day in and really appreciating each day that I have. Because when you live in a world where you're fearing tomorrow or, I mean, tomorrow's not promised and we know that in our industry very, very well. You know, you really got to take in the day and make sure that, you know, you're happy at the end of the day, you've made an impact or you, you know, had a positive uh, experience with the people in your lives on a daily basis. That's, that's the definition of happiness for me. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I think mine's kind of similar, you know, really fostering the relationships, the friends and the family that you hold dearest. I think really prioritizing that is true happiness, being surrounded with people that, you know, love you genuinely and you love them back, I think is such a beautiful thing. And sometimes we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. So I think having that inner peace, you know, the contentment with, you know, the life that you're living, you know, being happy with that and not the, you know, the FOMO of everything else, like being genuinely happy with who you are, I think is such a beautiful thing. Absolutely. I don't think happiness is a destination. <clears throat> I think it's a journey. I think it's exactly. a lifestyle. Yeah. It yeah. is a lifestyle. I think we can choose happiness every day, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. What do you think is currently the biggest burden on mental health in society? Hmm. Do you mean like the burden on like the system supporting mental health? Or do you mean like as an individual, the biggest issues we're dealing with through mental health? Yeah, more for individuals. Yeah, what's what's the biggest thing that's affecting their well-being in mental health i i think it's a combination of financial and a and and honestly like social media yep it has lots of benefits but i think it has eroded our self-worth it is eroded like what Bryn said fomo Everyone wants to be on that Italian beach with the beautiful pictures and the, you know, living their best life all the time. And then you look at yours and you're just doing the day to day grind and you got kids you're raising or whatever, and you can't go do those things. It's that comparison and that, that constant, you know, um, wishing for better and, and, and seeing like people just living their best life. It's, oh, how come I can't do that? How come I don't look like that? Why does not my ass that round? Like all these things, right? It's like, we're constantly comparing ourselves to what we're seeing on social media as the end all be all. Like we give it so much value. And I think that is what has caused us to live at the surface. And that's why we're depressed. We're, how, most people don't even really think about themselves or live an authentic life because they're trying to portray something for their followers. Right. Yep. And so I think yep. that is the biggest reason why we're so disconnected and so many people are depressed. Yeah. Such a great point. Really, really yeah. good point. 
I think there's definitely a lot of pressure that individuals are putting on themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Again, with the comparison, you want to be reaching certain milestones at certain ages. I think, you know, yeah, whether it comes to, you know, financial purchasing a house, having a job, having a certain salary, living a certain lifestyle. I think there's a lot that we're trying to, yeah, show other people. Um, But again, just coming back to the, you know, it's okay if you're not married with a kid by 30, or it's okay if you're not making X amount of dollars by 35, right? I think it really just comes back to being that internally peaceful with yourself and your decisions and that there is no deadline that you have to meet for society to accept you, right? I think that sometimes that can be a very challenging thing to see, especially when it's broadcasted to other places that there's 18 year olds making millions of dollars. (laughs) So I think- um, Yeah, I think the comparison is, can be a very detrimental thing to people's health. Yeah, no, and we're all on our own, our own timeline and everyone, you know, has different things happen at different times. And yeah, it really should not be a focus, you know, for anyone because it only leads to unhappiness. So I've got two more here. Boxes, you know. Exactly. Never ending. It's just. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just forget the pressures. Live life, man. You don't yep. know if you're going to be here tomorrow. Jeez. Exactly. Make the most well, of it. Yeah, exactly. Plus, stress ages you. So stop stressing about the things you can't control. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so second last one. What are you What are you most afraid of? Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called endomophobia and it's real. <laughs> and it's- Fair enough. I literally can't do bugs, and this is what prevented me from coming to Australia. Straight oh, up, <laughs> the the bugs, the bugs are the biggest the thing. Yeah. Oh, that... I I am debilitated when it comes about... to most bugs. spiders. What about them? Your spiders typically I cannot do unless they're like a daddy long leg, like really small, and I've seen them enough in my life, but. You know, beetles, creepy crawly things. Like, you know, I got some issues, and I don't know if I can handle the spiders in Australia. I've seen those. You guys have the worst, deadliest bugs ever. So <laughs> hard to convince me, but I want to go there so bad. <laughs> I'll tell you the bug-free zones to go to when you when you decide to go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I honestly don't even know what my biggest fear is. I think maybe just being alone and isolated without, again, the relationships. I think life really comes down to it. At the end of the day, what do you have, right? You have the people around you, surrounding you. You've got your relationships and stuff. So yeah. I think without that, I think it, it would be a very lonely, lonely life. And I think if you are lacking, you know, relationships in your life, I think reaching out to people, even though people in the past, right, that you haven't connected with in a long time, having when you have that good foundation from your childhood or anything like that, it's very easy to reconnect and build that back up. Yeah, no, really, really true and a good point. So final one here. Uh, What are you most proud of? My God, I personally, I think I am most proud of god that's a tough one because i have to say i'm proud of a few things but that's great i feel lucky to say that but i'm really proud of what me and brent have built because i was gonna say that too (laughs) because it's 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 like literally this is why we're we're best friends and business partners because we're making such a Every single yeah. day we're changing lives and we're not just bragging about that. It's people telling us this. Where the feedback we're getting from people is like so powerful. It what gets me up in the morning. It's what puts my head to bed at night. Like how amazing and supportive we are to the people in our lives. And just what we've been able to build and the support we received from that and being able to call this our own. I'm just so proud of it. It's our baby. <laughs> It's such a beautiful thing. I think it is a true testament to like collaboration is key, right? I would not be where I am without Eleni and vice versa, right? We, we lean on each other. We support each other. We build each other up and it's, we, we motivate each other, right? So 
I think yeah. having collaboration and, you know, teamwork and learning to really work with other people, be open to other perspectives and ideas and, you know, and feedback as well, I think is such a beautiful gift. And I think it really can just do wonders when you're open to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, not what a great way to end on. And thank you guys for sharing all of this. It's been, you know, love, love chatting to you. And uh, a final mm-hmm. thing before I forget, we'll put this in the show notes, but where can our listeners go if they want to learn more about you guys? Oh, yeah. Well, we are, are currently on uh, our, our website is synchronizedagency.com. We have a little bit of info out there, but we've recently just launched. So we are on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We're about to make an Instagram account. We're just getting those things up. So we're actually working like this is just a side note. We're working on that like today and tomorrow. So we could yeah. even, you know give you that information to share with our listeners whatever works but we really would love to connect with anyone who's willing to hear us out and educate themselves oh yeah yeah and we're happy to refer you to you know different people in different countries happy to find that and do a little bit of that leg work for you um so that you know that you're going to be working with somebody who is trusted and vetted a little bit as well yeah we do have connections globally so we can support that yeah great fantastic well thank, thank you again i really appreciate it Thank you for having us. Thanks, Nick. This interview highlighted the crucial connection between financial health and mental well-being. Key takeaways include education, learning and seeking advice, and power informed financial choices. Stress management. Planning and advisors reduce financial stress, promoting mental health. A long-term outlook. Expert guided financial goals ensure stability in the future. Expert collaboration. Like mental well-being, financial health benefits from a multidisciplinary approach. Communication. Open financial talks prevent relationship strain and stress. Personalized plans. Advisors create strategies aligned with individuals' needs for better decisions. Financial literacy. Education and expert guidance empower sound financial choices. Proactive planning. Strategies for uncertainties promote a sense of control. And finally, stress reduction. Informed decisions and planning reduce financial stress, enhancing overall well-being. Thank you so much to Lenny Pronzos and Bryn Swayze for joining me today for Move Your Mind.